I would like to introduce our special guest for this evening. Our special guest is Kelly Mawinney. Uh, I would like to invite Kelly to the stage, the virtual stage. Hi, Kelly. Uh, Kelly is a graduate of our Master's in Human Resource Management program. Uh, as a global people and culture leader, Kelly enables innovation and organizational transformation through talent leadership and, and has supported banks, government, entrepreneurial, and multinationals across North America, the Car Caribbean, and Western Europe, while being based in Toronto, New York, and Amsterdam, so a great deal of global experience. Currently, Kelly is a partner and the, the lead for the Toronto Career uh, um, uh, uh, Division practice. work practice. Thank you. That's the word I was I was losing at Mercer. So welcome, Kelly. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Marie Ellen. I it's it's just delightful to reconnect. It was was lovely to uh, to see you and and see Tom again. So thank you for having me. Great. I'm so glad that you uh, have generously agreed to sit with us uh, for a short time and to tell us a little bit about your career, especially since it's it's so vast and there have been so many so many um uh, different experiences i wonder if you might be able to tell us a little bit about your career path how did you get where you are today and what were the what were the uh, the stops along the way yeah and i'll try to keep it tight um i have lots of stories and anecdotes and it would get me way off track but when i was uh 14 i decided i wanted to go to business school so i went off to interview schools to drag my mom along and i went ultimately uh, in grade nine, picked Laurier, and I went to Laurier, and I went to uh, undergrad four years of business school. And then at that time, when you came out, it was, you know, kind of account management or financial management. And I didn't know anything about consulting and, and things like that. So I thought I was going into advertising. And uh, ultimately, I ended off going off into financial services, which ended up being a great step for me because it's actually a, just a, a good, very good, solid industry to be in. So starting off in insurance, personal, then off into life insurance. So, um, you know, I was at Manulife and then I went to Scotiabank for my first tour of about 10 years, uh, where in I left ultimately in a consulting role, which had given me exposure to consulting for the first time, which is where I realized I'm a macro person and I like to solve macro issues and touch a lot of different fronts. And then at that time, I thought, well, what's a good thing to be doing now? And I thought technology, definitely. So I went out and became a technology consultant in the financial services sector. And um, from there, I went in and out of banking. So I was you know, basically in banking and then back into consulting and then in banking and back out to consulting um, because there's pros and cons to both environments. They're quite different environments, of course, but they, they have you know, pros and cons. And then fundamentally, I was knew I wanted to be narrowing down, down. I knew I wanted to do a master's degree. And I was wondering, I had been trying to pick one all along. So ultimately, I did some research and I ended up on a Forbes 100 or no Forbes list that said the top 10 degrees to be doing in and around. It must have been 2015. And uh, I started thinking, yeah, this is a perfect rounding out and movement in my career. At the same time, I was leading HR transformation for Accenture. So taking the degree, doing the role, and then just consistently built out the HR uh, component of my practice from that point forward. So, you know, got the tech, got the HR, financial services and government are my industries. And, and that's how I got to now. Yeah, I, you know, it's, I'm really glad that, or it's really wonderful to hear that example, because I, I think, um, you know, it demonstrates quite clearly that there are, there, that there are no direct routes, right, that we, 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 there's, there, are, uh, you try things out, you move depending on your interests, what you, what pulls you, what guides you, and ultimately that shapes a career. So it's, it's, um, it's a wonderful example of, of really kind of learning as you go and making choices that that are based on your experience. Absolutely. And you get to here and you sit atop it and it is all interconnected and it yeah. serves, each move serves the other. So you've got a full complete story uh, or at least to the point that you are you are in your life now, but it, it makes a lot of sense when you get to here. Yeah, Perhaps seems logical so. in yeah. retrospect, but yeah. you couldn't have planned it from the beginning. Not necessarily, yeah. no. 
Yeah, great. Okay. So I wonder, given that this is a, a mentoring event, if you could tell us about the networking or mentoring in your career and how that has aided you in terms of your development. Somewhere along the way, probably in my the early 30s, maybe late 20s, uh, networking was a buzz. So it was, mm -hmm. there were books, there were people speaking on it, it was a thing. And so uh, I've always been outgoing and I started going to networking events, um, which I really enjoyed because, um, and some of them were very specific to an industry or to women or, you know, to women in technology and had the opportunity to share ideas and meet people. And at first it was a lot about that sort of thing, but I quickly came to understand um, how I could leverage this to my advantage. And I became more mindful of leveraging conversations while I was having them, honestly. And so, you know, I would have a conversation. It's like, I'd like to have a coffee with this person. She's really smart. Oh, I'd like to know more about this industry. I'm going to book this. Oh, this person can help me, you know, in my career. Oh, this can person can help me get promoted. You know, whatever it was, I had this sort of running sense of, and even some people, you know, you just collect them in there, they're in your back pocket. And, you know, LinkedIn is a wonderful, wonderful tool for networking. I use it all the time and I've used networking extensively to get my roles extensively. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a big fan of networking. I find it very comfortable. I think everyone, once they get immersed in it, finds it very comfortable. Maybe at first it seems a little odd. Why am I going to meet people? This is the agenda is to meet people. And it starts to be, I think, a lot of fun and, uh, so that's really enjoyable. On the mentoring side, uh, I've had the great fortune of mentoring so many amazing people and being super proud, if I'm allowed to be proud, at this stage in my career, seeing where all of those folks have gotten to uh, the and, and, you know, believing that they're in the roles that make them happy and, and whatnot. Um, so that's a great part of it. I unfortunately didn't have a lot of guidance in my own career. Um, and I would have, I longed for a mentor and I know a lot of people mm. uh, do and they, you know, it's not unlike a romantic relationship. It's not necessarily the easiest to find a suitable mentor, um, you know, or or some kind of a guide in your life. So I, 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 I'm always, you know, recommending to people to keep their mind open. You don't know where your mentor may be, and you'll have not even your mentor, multiple men mentors, depending uh, on, you know, the environment you're in. So I highly encourage mentorship. Yeah, yeah, but it, I think, I think, um, you know, talking about these as two separate things, uh, is a useful way to to recognize that while even if you don't currently have a mentor, it doesn't mean that relationships that you can't you know that the relationships aren't useful, right? You the the the, the connections you had, the the stories you told about about networking clearly tell us that uh, that people helped you. With oh, your career. absolutely. Yeah. And in fact, you could have found a mentor in your networking. That's very possible. I'm sure okay. lots of folks have. They've been in networking of some kind, whether they're attending something formal or an informal gathering. You know, they've, you know, could have tripped over their mentor. I know people have tripped over me and me becoming their mentor that, you know, that way. I've also, I also wanted to mention there's various mentoring groups out there that have reached out to me to say, hey, will you be a mentor with? our group and I've joined those groups and been mentors and they they run it professionally the firms hire them to go out and and you know get people like me to be a mentor it's they're fabulous so yeah, they're yeah. so you can get some help if you need it you can absolutely yeah. get help yeah great uh, I'd like to shift gears while I have you here for uh for the for the, the next few minutes I wonder Given that our students are about to embark on their HR careers, I wonder if you could tell us from your point of view, from where you're sitting, uh, where do you think the profession is going and what do you think some of the key trends are going forward? I think the, per the profession continues to evolve from being personnel. You know, I think it's had a long history 
um, in administration and policing and, you know, the day to day. And I think it's worked very hard to re-identify itself as a strategic partner and, you know, being at the table. But I think more importantly, it, it, and I hope this very much, it's becoming real and it's becoming a group people want to leverage and want to spend time with and see value in. Um, as opposed to some of those former uh, roles that HR has had. And, and certainly in any teaching that I've done in any, whether I've done it at school or I've done it in uh, my capacity as a leader, I am always talking next gen HR, you know, so what, what is that? And that is, and I speak to the students, that's you. Um, you're bringing it forward. And, and so we've got, you know, environments that are more, you know, more empathetic, more authentic, more, you know, in the past, if you were going to have a leave or experience burnout, uh, you were going to have to fight to take that. That was something where you might have to go and get a lawyer. And now, you know, we've got a situation in our, you know, in you know, have had situations in our environments where people are getting, you know, close to a leave or a break, but we find different ways to deal with it. So entirely empathetic, very generous. So I think the shifting nature of our, our role in an organization and what we can bring. Um, and I, I think, you know, one of a lot of the work that I do with clients, HR operating models or HR transformation and you know, you go into a client and you think they may be a little further along based on what you know about them from the outside. And often they aren't. And, you know, there's pieces of technology that aren't up to speed or we haven't built out HR business partners or, you know, organizational efficiency is not something that we have in our kit bag. So, you know, you can be starting with groups that have some aspect of talent, some aspect of comp and Ben, and that's their whole suite. Or you can have you know, other firms that have a much broader frame of reference, including well-being and d &I, and some of these uh, perhaps more, certainly more current um, uh, areas of development in the HR practice. So I think, you know, we're, we're working on remote work, we're dealing with the hybrid, we're dealing with, you know, well-being is shifting into organizational health and so that's not sort of just one by one well-being or here, I'll give you some money to accommodate that. That's, you know, this the entirety of how does an organization operate so people don't experience breakdowns. So there's more knowledge. It's more holistic. Uh, I think it's just it's in a better place than it has been historically and consequently is getting increased credibility in the in the workforce. And so mm -hmm. in, you know, as a partner. Uh, interesting. So it sounds it sounds like that reflection is around that as the world changes and starts to be concerned, more concerned about issues around health and mental health and 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 some of these broader issues that you're talking about, HR is is growing to fit to, to serve that. Purpose. Absolutely. And I love just even having that conversation and you framing it that way, because it, it's a little bit of we're coming into our own. So we might have been struggling to get to the table before because the table wasn't made up of the right things, you know, so we had to, you know, insert ourselves. Now the conversation's coming to us because we're experts in the area that people now need to focus on. Um, yeah. And we still have folks that, you know, will turn their head away from DE&I and efforts that need to be made there. Yet, you know, most of the companies, 76% of companies on one of my surveys said, you know, everyone's planning to do something with de and i and yet 13% of senior executives were just shrugging their shoulders and saying, ah, you know, that sort of thing where that's concerned. And that's, that's usual, but there's so much more of that now, you know, so there's a conversation, there's a debate, there's money. You know, I did a conversation with another school last weekend and I, I, I said, you know, to these students, their MBA grads, executive MBAs, I said, you know, are, have they bought into, you know, DE&I or are they looking at it as, you know, sort of rolling their eyes as an HR thing? And, and they said, yeah, there's some who are definitely doing that, a good chunk. And so it was interesting because um, I spoke to that from the place of money. Well, here's what it's going to cost you if you don't do it and you're not going to get the revenue. And that speaks to profitability. So if you're a business manager, you're going to want to pay attention to DE&I mm -hmm. and B. Right. 
Well, thanks for that, Kelly. With the, with the few moments I have left, I don't want to miss the opportunity for you to give some direct advice to our students. What can students do right now, those on this call, what can they do right now to prepare themselves for their careers? So this is the way that I looked at it in a synopsis, who you know. So reach out to friends, reach out to family, reach out to people you know, people who went to your school. You know, I had somebody reach out to me on LinkedIn. He'd gone to Laurier back in the day, and ultimately he came to work at RBC. And that was just because he reached out to me, Cole, and he had gone to Laurier. And so I knew, and then I moved everything along, and it was perfect timing. So I also had, when I was CHRO at uh, Holtz, I had somebody whose daughter wanted to work there. Could I connect her? Yes, I can. Let's come in for interviews. She works there. So there's any possibility between people you know who are in those roles or, or people who know somebody or friends, that's it's the way to go. Who you know, who you are. So who you are, you really need to understand aspects of yourself. At this stage, you probably do, but maybe codify it, maybe sit down and write it. You know, you know, are you a detailed person or a macro person, an analytical person or a gut instinct person, you know, a corporate person or a small business person? I think a certain amount of self-analysis and maybe even chat with friends or chat with any kind of counselors to understand yourself in terms of the context of what it is that that makes you up. And then the next piece I've done is, and I would never have thought of this 10 years ago, 20 years ago, what makes you happy? would never cross my mind. I've always been ambitious and I would self-punish and I would do anything it took to get where I needed to go. But now I'm saying, ask yourself what makes you happy? You know, is it sports? Is it thinking? Is it helping others? Is it teaching? Is it animals? And so you see by what I put into that list, it's a bunch of different things that I actually really do gravitate toward, but I didn't know any of that until I actually put my mind to it. So I think some of it is, you know, so it's like, who do you know, who are you and what makes you happy? Oh, that's a wonderful, well, well-organized, thoughtful uh, comment. Thank you, Kelly. The, um, uh, the, the who you have, what makes you happy really resonates for me, but I do think tonight we are have an opportunity to help everybody on the call, get to know people that can, can help with the first part of your strategy. Absolutely. So we're going to, so for that, we're going to move into the networking event. So thank you very much for, for sharing all of that, inf that, th those thoughts, those, those insightful comments much appreciated. You're most welcome. So, Thank you.